Hey everybody. So when you're installing Windows on your computer, let's say if you're building a new system, one question that might come up is, should I install Windows 10 or should I install Windows 11? Now of course this could be more subjective to what you really want. Um, of course Windows 11 is the newer build of Windows. It will receive updates well after 2025. I want to say that the end year for support for Windows 11 will be 2031 if I were to guess because Windows 11 came out in 2021 based on the 10 year support life cycle that Microsoft has had for quite some time. Um, of course Windows 11 is newer. It will receive updates for longer than Windows 10. But Windows 11 is known for a few things that in many cases have given it the nickname of the next Windows Vista. Matter of fact, my very first video on Windows 11 was back in 2021 here in this home when it was still quote unquote under construction. Me standing in here in this room with no AC, no power. Um, it was hot in here. <laughs> standing here talking about Windows 11 saying how it could be the next Windows Vista and for many reasons it could be that for one thing we have to factor in the Microsoft Elite Class Message Requirement on Windows 11 which is of course my nickname for the Windows 11 Minimum System Requirements which I think are ridiculous that's why I call them the Elite Class System Requirements limiting Windows 11 to only the most elite of computers out there well that was the case in 2021 of course here we are two years later a lot more computers can run Windows 11 now but back in 2021 when Windows 11 came out uh, if your computer was over three years old there was a chance that it wouldn't meet those elite class system requirements so <laughs> these two computers here both these laptops here do not meet the Microsoft elite class system requirements so we have Windows 10 on this HP uh, what is this thing? I don't even know what it is. It's a cheap and pavilion laptop with a Celeron SOC. We could pretty much call this a solid state machine because, well, if it weren't for the optical drive, it would be totally solid state. That would mean moving parts in it because it has no fan. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but it has Windows 10 on it. You can see there's a desktop. We got this old thing here. This is a, uh, Compact Presario V6000 from 2006. Yes, this thing is way, way older than the minimum system requirements for Windows 11. Not even near <laughs> meeting those requirements. Now, of course, we have uh, 4 gigs of RAM, which that meets the minimum requirement for memory. But, of course, about everything else does not meet the Microsoft Elite Class minimum system requirements. Now, of course, this machine here it's uh, not very fast with Windows 11 due to its age but there are a lot of computers out there from let's say 2016 2017 that could run Windows 11 quite well heck there's computers from 2011 2012 that time period such as this Octoplex 390 here you can see uh, well I got the cover off the side of it but this machine it has I believe a Core i5 2500 CPU well below the Microsoft Elite class requirement for CPUs but this machine if you install Windows 11 on it by brute force using Rufus this thing would run Windows 11 quite well with a solid state drive so should you install Windows 11? I mean like I say it's totally up to you if your computer meets the Elite class system requirements then go for it now if it doesn't meet the Elite class system requirements that's kind of a little bit of a I don't know, I'm not going to say an issue. I mean, I mean, heck, the Plexi, for example, it doesn't meet the Elite Class requirements. The Mentire Lux, it doesn't meet the Elite Class system requirements for Windows 11. But here we are running Windows 11 on both machines, and I mean, for the most part, it runs it quite well. Windows 10, however, is a bit more snappy. Windows 10, of course, for example, when you right click the taskbar, If we get it, there we are. Maybe I should be nicer on the mouse here. You can see how, well, when you right click on Windows 11, you have a mere two options <laughs> Task Manager and Taskbar Settings. 
used to be task manager wasn't even there until people complained about it and Microsoft finally sent out a, a hotfix in Windows Update to fix that. But you can see we only have taskbar settings and task manager. Whereas over here on Windows 10, we have all sorts of options just from simply right clicking on the taskbar. And of course in Windows 10, you have the option was probably in, very in the settings, but you do have the option to relocate the taskbar to the right, to the left, or the top. Whereas in Windows 11, you don't. Windows 11, you can see how, of course, the icons are center aligned on the taskbar. You can go in and change that in settings to left align them. But there's one thing, though, that, uh, of course, in Windows 10 that I like. You click the clock you have a running clock with seconds whereas over here all you get is notifications I don't even see a calendar so in Windows 10 you click the clock and the date you get of course the time down to the seconds and yes it is getting late you also have a calendar and of course where you can look at uh, for example if you have a calendar set up to have a uh, meetings and stuff like that those would generally show there too I do believe so whereas over here um, not quite the same now to my understanding yes you can now go in and change Windows 11 to show the clock with seconds on the taskbar but it, I mean maybe you don't want the clock on the taskbar to have the seconds you just want to be able to click this and see a running clock with seconds like you have in Windows 10 I mean, come on. Um, another thing. You right click in Firefox 4 and Windows 11, you get this dumbed down, stupid menu where all the useful stuff is buried behind us, show more options. You have to click that to get the full menu. Whereas in Windows 10, you just simply right click. You don't have to click show more options because it's already showing all the options for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Now I'm not going to touch on every single little thing between Windows 10 and Windows 11. It's very, it's a very unscientific video, if we call it that. Um, for example, we'll look at settings on Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now, as you know, on this Windows 10 install, I do have Open Shell already installed, but. For example, if we go back to, okay, so when you launch settings, you're given system. Now, I do believe in Windows 11 23H2, they're changing the home screen in the settings menu. So, I do like the layout of settings in Windows 11 better than I do Windows 10. It's more, I'm going to say it's a little more user intuitive, I think. Again, that's more of a subjective opinion, but... You can see over here on Windows 10, everything's laid out a bit different. And one thing about Windows 11 I do like is, um, now I can't confirm this because I have not changed the default browser, but you can see on Windows 10 how, of course, it wants you to reset your web browsing settings. So when you change your default web browser, it will pop this up. And let's say someone who doesn't really know what this means, they click on it and they do this restore. Well, it changes their, uh, it changes their web browser back to Microsoft Edge. <laughs> it's like, come on. Um, but I do like the settings menu in Windows 11 better than I do the one in Windows 10. Alright, start menus. Let me get the actual Windows 10 start menu up here. Alright, so of course, Windows 10 has the live tiles in the start menu. I cannot stand, excuse me, I hate live tiles. I can't stand them at all. Whereas on Windows 11, and of course we have a start menu that looks more like what I have on, let's say, my Android phone. Stuff is neatly laid out, and of course here's all the baked in goodies, well excuse me, not baked in, the stuff it downloaded the first time it got access to the internet goodies. When you, put, when you fresh install Windows 11 and Windows 10, you don't have a whole lot of built-in apps because it goes on the internet and fetches a lot of these apps. But anyways, you click all apps. You have this right here. And of course, 
you can change the pinned apps here and of course this is all default this hasn't been changed and with time you'll get this recommended stuff down here but let's say if you have that turned off to, to show the recommendations well half the start menu is just wasted space over on Windows 10 for example um, since I can't stand the live tiles let's go and get rid of them we'll just unpin the group from start and we'll do the same there Sorry if I won't get that on screen really well. Alright. We go back to the start menu. You can see now the start menu uh, takes up less space. So, I mean, other than that, the start menus are pretty similar in what they do. They're still inferior to the Windows 7 start menu, in my opinion, and that's, of course, why I run OpenShell on Windows 10 and Windows 11. And, of course, this is a clean install Windows 11, so it doesn't have that yet. But, anyway, like I said, not, I'm not going to cover every single little thing, but Windows 10, for example, you see this machine I have Windows 10 installed on, and the reason is because it's a pretty limited machine. It's not very powerful at all. So, for example, if we go going to look at our specifications, so you can see we have an Intel Celeron N3060 SoC CPU, 4 gigs of memory, and we actually got a solid state drive in this machine, but that Intel Celeron SoC is very limited on power, and I did actually install Windows 11 on this thing, and I think I have a video up as well of, of this thing running Windows 11. And it was quite slow. Now it's also pretty slow of Windows 10, but Windows 10 does run faster on this than Windows 11 did. So Windows 10 is still the go-to OS for limited hardware, I think. Um, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, this computer does not meet the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. So it technically can't run Windows 11 unless you force install it anyway. But Windows 11 does run slower on this than Windows 10. Windows 11 will fetch all the drivers it needs out of the box, uh, or excuse me, off Windows Update. <laughs> but Windows 10 really is a better option for this thing. So Windows 10, and this has been confirmed online as well, Windows 10 is a bit faster than Windows 11 with gaming and things like that as well. So even if your computer does meet the Elite Class System requirements for Windows 11, you may want to put Windows 10 on that computer if you want things to run just a tad faster. But, then again, we're getting into the end months of 2023, which only means we're getting closer to that cutoff date in 2025 for Windows 10. So, you have to keep that in mind as well. But, like I say, I do tend to prefer Windows 11. Once you've gone through and you have fixed everything, as I like to call it. So look here on this machine here, look at the Plexi. So, for example, I have the open shell menu. I've changed a few different things. I have the classic paint on there, which I hear the next paint coming up on Windows 11 is going to be much nicer. It's adding some new features. But there's a lot of things I've done here. For example, when you right click, you don't have to do the stupid show more options because I disabled that with a register tweak. And if you're, in case you're wondering, um, I do have a video up on how to do a lot of these tweaks in Windows 11 to make it easier to use and stuff like that. Um, now, of course, you right click on the taskbar, you still get the, uh, the, the two little options there. But, I mean, hey, it's, it's better than what it was for sure. So, Windows 11, once you go through and change some things, it does make things a bit easier to use. Now, I should note, this, the, the q Plexi definitely does not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11. It's running an AMD Phenom 2 6-core 1045T CPU, 8 gigs of memory, and a 256-gig SSD. And I think the graphics is the NVIDIA GeForce GT 640 GPU. We can confirm that. By looking in here, Task Manager, it should be in here. Yep, GeForce GT 640. So, 
some computers out there that don't meet Windows 11 minimum requirements can run Windows 11 quite well, but I can say that um, Windows 10 was just a was just a tiny bit faster on this machine than Windows 11 is. So it's like there you have it. So I know this is kind of all over the place, but I did want to kind of just share my opinions between Windows 10 and Windows 11. <laughs> of course, again, got this oldest dirt computer here from. Oh, is doing a lot of stuff at the same time. There we are. <laughs> it tends to take a while to get things back up once it turns the screen off. And of course, I'm using a graphics driver, which is not technically the correct one for this machine, but hey, it's it's working. So, um, my opinion is between Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, Windows 11, there are a few things I don't like, of course, that Windows 10 does better. Windows 10 is a, it was a, it's just a tad bit faster. But Windows 11 will have support for a longer period of time. But of course, Windows 11 uh, has very high minimum system requirements that you have to bypass. And Microsoft might be doing away with the ability to bypass those elite class system requirements, making them hard requirements. I talked about that in another video. But we shall see when Windows 11 23H2 comes out. So, anyways, that wraps up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel, that's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.